Yes, folks, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome once again to Mod Extra Games and Collectibles. It's time for another action figure review here on the channel. And as you can see on the screen right now, today's instalment, we're going to be taking a closer look at the G.I. Joe Classified Series Quick Kick figure. This won't be the first review you've watched about Quick Kick, I am sure, but hopefully it will be the most thorough and it will be the one that will help you make a purchase decision if you're thinking about picking up a Quick Kick of your own. So stick around because I'm going to give you all the ins and outs and ups and downs. We're going to Unbox it, take a look at the packaging and the first initial reaction to the figure as I take him out. We're going to talk about aesthetic, going to talk about articulation, going to go over all these accessories, and by the end of it all, hopefully, you'll know everything you need to know about Quick Kick. So stick around, let's get into it, and let's get started by traveling back in time and taking a look at the unboxing. All right, then, let's get Quick Kick unboxed. As you can see, it's the return of the windowed packaging with a slightly new design, which amalgamate some of the window lust packaging with the previous windowed packaging so the figure and all the goodies are on show we've got the lovely little bit of artwork down here in the bottom right hand corner gi joe classified series gi joe quick kick pretty standard stuff then on the back quick kick is 116 in the line i'm very pleased to see that they've continued with this lovely kind of artwork style of the figure and we've got one here with quick kick if you're interested to know what the easter egg reference is in there go check out my easter egg videos on this channel i'll put a link in the description down below a couple of breakout windows showing off a few of the key highlights like the pattern in his pants and his shuriken throwing thing in my doodad all the legal bollocks and malarkey across the bottom and then of course we've got the little data card information here in fact, I'm going to talk about the data card using the side along with the crappy QR code. So let's zoom in on this. Okay, first things first then, we've got a sword and key here. This is obviously reflective of Quick Kick's love of MMORPGs. The guy's just mad for World of Warcraft 2. Then we've got what's clearly a kitchen knife there because as everybody knows, along with his karate skills, he's an accomplished chef. This down here is a basketball net. Quick Kick's a massive basketball fan and follows the Golden State Warriors because he's a... You know, he's a big Steph Curry guy. And then finally, we've got this little kind of karate kicking dude here. This is because Quick Kick loves the TV series Cobra Kai and is hungry for, absolutely starving for the season six release. Can't wait. On the other side, we've got a larger piece of the artwork that appears on the front showing Quick Kick off in action mode. Hiya! Right, let's get him open then. I'll pop the tape at the bottom here. So pull the bottom flap out. And oh, of course, first thing you come across is the paperwork. Slide Quick Kick out there. Standard G.I. Joe good guy blue background. All right, uh, backpack. The fudgy bar. Oh, crikey, how'd you get that out of there? Any clues, anybody, without bending bending it? What, does that just slide through? I hope so, yep. Yeah. Throwing shuriken thing. Selfie fish lips. Uh, head swap. Sword one. Sword two. Oh. Nunchuck one. Come on. Oh, you little bastard. Nunchuck two. Hand swap. Hand swap. Hand swap. Ah, hear that noise. And of course. Ah, come on, quick it. The figure himself. And there we are, folks. There's Quick Kick released from his plastic prison. I'm going to go away and get some good old-fashioned man-child playtime in with this figure. And I'll be back in a couple of days to share some review thoughts. So stick around, because Future Chris is going to be with you in three, two, one. All right, let's get started with the review section of the video then. I'm going to start with my first section of my three A's, which is the aesthetic, and talk about the visual experience with Quick Kick. And we'll begin up top here with one of my favourite parts of the G.I. Joe Classified Series experience, the head sculpt. Uh, once again, a cracking face sculpt here with Quick Kick. We've got excellent features, good paint applications, definitely got a lot of personality and character. Unique features of his own, so he stands apart from the rest of the crowd. And there's plenty of additional elements like his headband with the uh, little uh, rising sun Japanese symbol there on the front. Uh, you will notice if I get right close in, we've got a little bit of white paint spill in the paint applications there across the front of his hair. So that little flicker hair uh, that is draped across his headband has had a bit of white leakage on, which is a little bit of a shame. One of those things that, you know, until you notice it, it's not a problem. And then once you do notice it, it's all you can see, you know. Uh, but overall, a great head sculpt there, an excellent representation of the character uh, with all the kind of key features and elements of his visual identity, certainly from above the shoulders. 
um, in place. And of course, uh, in addition to the headband, which is a key part of his visual identity, the rest of what you would immediately associate nostalgically with Quick Kick is present and correct as well. He's topless, he's got the red shuriken belt there, he's got his black karate gi pants on, he's topless, he's got bare feet, um, he's got the grey belt and the grey wristbands, which I seem to recall from the cartoon... I haven't looked at a vintage figure for a while, but uh, from the cartoon, uh, that was generally how he looked. Uh, they've obviously done the little modern contemporary classified twist there, as they often do. For example, here on the side of his trousers, you can see they've put this little grey, swooshy, windy, cloudy pattern thing in uh, to add a little splash of colour, add a little bit of modernisation, uh, and to give it a little bit of shelf lift. The sculpting is good, the musculature is, you know, <laughs> proper buff, like you'd expect from Quick Kick, and again, very accurate to the vintage nostalgic image of the character. Got the nipples, as Lenny noted on the live stream when they announced the figure originally, so he's anatomically correct, which is obviously very important when it comes to your, <laughs> your fantasy fictional action figure toys. <laughs> But despite what you would perhaps fundamentally argue is a pretty basic figure, you know, topless guy in pants with a belt across his chest, they've still found opportunity to sculpt in some detail and put some paint applications on there to give it a little bit more character, a bit more personality. So his shuriken belt that drapes across his shoulder there has got a suitable leathery look. They've applied some paint applications to the shuriken tucked into their little pockety sleeve things um again just to give it a little bit of uh, lift a little bit of color uh, you'll notice the sculpted details in along his belt and rather than just a sort of plain belt we've got some pouches and some buckles and some belt studs and whatnot which is lovely to see the pants as well i've got some nice creases some creases and folds and a little bit of texture detail in there like the seams and stuff just once again to bring it to life and to give it more character and depth and the grey wristbands, along with the grey belt and the grey trimmings on his pants there. Uh, just give, frame up the figure, give it a little bit of colour variety. Although it is a bit of a shame that the pouches on his belt haven't been painted blue. Um, which, if I remember rightly, his, he had blue pouches in the cartoon at least. Uh, anyway, you know, correct me in the comments down below. You know what I'm like. I just start talking on a hot mic without checking my facts first. So, yeah, the visual experience is pretty good. It certainly is um, spot on for, uh, you know, a vintage G.I. Joe fan who wants a classified update um, with enough kind of contemporary elements to bring it to life a bit. So aesthetically, I'm going to give Quick Kick a thumbs up. He's exactly what I wanted, which was that nostalgic experience. And I've been enjoying him, posing him up on the shelf with that bit of variety and that different flavor uh, very, very much. So yeah, thumbs up on the aesthetic. Uh, right, let's, uh, let's take a look at his articulation now, shall we? Starting above the shoulders then with the head, we've got the ball inside the head at the top of the neck and a ball at the bottom of the neck, giving good down, giving good up giving full 360 exorcist swivel and a little bit of tilt and uh, head banging if you're so inclined. Moving down a bit further, you can see here in the shoulder, we've got the butterfly joint to give a little bit of shuffle back and forward. Mine were very stiff out of the box. Had to get the hairdryer on those, so a little word of warning to the wise. Hinge and swivel then at the shoulder, giving you full 360 and getting you up like so. Then we have swivel at the top of the bicep for tricep. Lovely pinless elbow that gets you up to there. And with the hands that come on the figure, at least, for the, for the moment, uh, we have, uh, obviously, the standard pegged in hands, so you've got full swivel there, and they've both got up and down motion. Ab crunch here across the middle of the chest, giving a good crunch forward and a good crunch back. I meant to mention this, actually, when I talked about the aesthetic. That is definitely one element that sort of breaks the, um, the aesthetic quality of the figure is the ab crunch that they've chosen to put on the figure. It looks, um, you know, a little bit too toyetic as Dave would say. Then we've got the ball in the waist, giving you good waist swivel there, and a little bit of extra movement all the way around. Got the G.I. Joe classified drop down groin joint, giving you a decent forward, all the way out like so. And as usual, a little bit of an obstructed back there by the curve of the arse cheek. Thigh cut at the top here, pinless double knee that will get you up to there. Then there's an ankle swivel up here, uh, just where the uh, bare leg meets the trouser leg. And then the hinge and rocker on the feet. 
So it's no secret to regulars around these parts that I'm a big fan of the G.I. Joe Classified Series articulation scheme. I've had a lot of fun playing around with Quick Kick the last couple of days, getting him into kind of karate poses and stuff. My only criticism really is that I have, as of yet, been unable to get him into a decent kind of kicking pose or um, something a little bit more dynamic and exciting and martial artsy without the use of a foot stand, which is a wee bit of a disappointment. I, I can't help but compare Quick Kick to my Jada Toys Street Fighter 2 Ryu figure. Uh, and that Ryu figure has just got an incredible articulation scheme that allows you to do very exciting, uh, energetic and interesting martial arts poses that I haven't quite managed to replicate with kick, Quick Kick. But by the standard of G.I. Joe Classified itself, lots of fun to be had with the articulation and it's still going to be a thumbs up. Right, on to the accessories now then, folks, and I'm going to start with the head swap here that I've popped on the figure. I have affectionately called this one the fish lips selfie <laughs> head swap because of the way they've done the little ooh thing <laughs> with his lips. I believe the intention is to have him interacting with one of the other accessories. That's the purpose of this face, but I much prefer the main one that came on the figure itself, if I'm being perfectly honest, but it's fine. It's as well sculpted as the other. Uh, it's, the features are there. The paint applications are there. It's all very, very good. I just, I just can't not associate those lips with the uh, the uh, teenage influencer selfie fish lips next up there's a couple of hand swaps i've started here with the fists there uh, these are lovely sculpted pieces obviously very appropriate for the quick kick character and one of his main preferred methods of combat uh, and open up the doorway to a number of interesting poses and opportunities for your shelf or your photographs with the fig uh, these have hinges in them and as you can see there they're back and forth hinges then we have another set of hand swaps, which are the flat-palmed kind of uh, karate chop style pose there. One for each hand. Uh, again, very appropriate for the character, for the preferred combat specialism of quick kick there. Uh, and between the six hands you've got, the you know the three pairs um, for each side, uh, a wealth of opportunity uh, for different poses and different stuff you can do with the character, which I think is really tremendous. Next for Quick Kick, we have his backpack. It's a single piece of moulded plastic in the red. Uh, nice nostalgic choice of colour there. Uh, got plenty of fine sculpted details in, but no paint applications to bring it to life. Um, but it's got pouches and pockets and straps and whatnot. Uh, it, it's a standard pegged-in kind of operation there uh, to fit into the hole here on Quick Kick's back. Uh, and it also has some weapon storage in it, which... Uh, well, I'll get to that in just a second. Because it's for his swords. He's got two swords here, little short katana things. Uh, I must apologise. Someone in the past told me the name uh, of these short katana blades, and I've, uh, I've I've completely forgotten. So sorry to that individual who told me. If they want to drop in the comments again and refresh my memory, please feel free to do so. But these are pretty nice. Uh, always very happy when I see a bladed weapon that has the metallic paint job on the blade itself. Then a bit of paint on the hilt here with some uh, sculpted details to bring it to life. Uh, and then, I don't know if you can see that there. In fact, let's bring it closer. There you go, bring it a little bit closer so you can see the sculpted details in the handle there and the little tiger sculpted in at the base of the sword. Uh, and these fit in the backpack and they slide into those little channels on the backpack nice and neatly like so. Uh, now I'm going to take the backpack off for a second for when I show you the next weapon, which is Quick Kicks Nunchucks. Uh, very similar design to the swords there with the uh, handle design, the metallic paint application on the chain in the middle and the little tiger, um, sculpted tiger motif at either end. These are okay. They're very loose and gummy. See that? Um, which meant that I found it very difficult to put in his grippy hands quite the frustration uh, and since i've got him i've used these much less frequently than i have the swords just with the way the chain is in the middle and the gumminess i've just found it very difficult to do anything particularly interesting with these but there is on figure storage again got these little loops here on the back of his belt and you just kind of bend them over and slide them in i like to go bottom up um you may like to go top down you know <laughs> whatever your preference may be and there you go. There they are in place. Obviously, uh, you can see why I took the backpack off just so that I could uh, allow you to see that much more clearly on the camera there. 
Well, we're not done yet in the weapon selection because we've got this little uh, swooshy throne shuriken effect here as well. A little bit kind of in line with the more like the Marvel Legends style type of stuff, but it's quite nice. The shuriken is painted on the end and then you've got this blue swooshy uh, symbol looks very comic book artwork to me, which I really appreciate uh, so that you can show quick kickoff throwing his shurikens and then finally we have the fudgy bar here uh, Lovely piece of work great little Easter egg nod to the character's lore and origins in the cartoon you can see uh, the paint applications are really awesome on this with the metallic foil on the underside of the red wrapper with the chocolate brown color of the chocolate with the sculpted little uh, cubes there and uh, this is just a great little touch just a, a nice bit of uh, humor that they've uh, put in with the figure uh, and also adds to uh, you know a little shelf presence posing fun if that's your you know your way of doing things if that's your style uh, so yeah really pleased to see that uh, i think it's just a great little addition to the accessory selection so it's a massive thumbs up for me in terms of the accessory selection. I think it opens the door to a lot of posing opportunity and things to do with your figure. Hand swaps and head swaps should come as standard with G.I. Joe Classified Series, in my opinion, anyway, especially the closed fists. It, it, it's just a no-brainer. Uh, but he's got the swords, he's got the blades. My only disappointment really is the nunchucks. I just think they're too rubbery. Uh, but I've just chosen not to use them. So yeah, massive thumbs up on that. Uh, a world of possibility for photography good shelf displays, dioramas, etc, etc. Very, very happy indeed. Well, folks, final thoughts time. Uh, apologies to the regulars, he's not on the turntable. The batteries are dead, and I haven't got any <laughs> replacement batteries in the house. So I'll go out and get some tomorrow, but for now you'll just have to have a kind of uh, uh, you know, freestanding uh, figure facing in one direction. But uh, this is the pose that I kind of ended on uh, last night with Quick Kick after I finished a, a good man-child play session with him, and I've had a lot of fun. He's interacted well with a number of my other Joes and other um, Cobras. I've taken some fun photos with him. I had a good time doing my one-minute showcase video. Keep your eye out for that soon. Um, I'm happy with the purchase. Uh, I wanted a nostalgic look and feel. Got a nostalgic look and feel. Wanted a little bit of a contemporary twist. Got that. Great accessory selection. Loads of options. What more could you want? I think it's definitely worth the money lots of value in there so big thumbs up for quick kick from me all right well i'll wrap it up there then uh, please do drop into the comments down below and share your thoughts if you've got your quick kick already which i suspect many of you have by now then let me know how you've been getting on with him and how your man child playtime has been taking place uh hit the subscribe hit the like button all that good youtube -y stuff blah 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 uh but otherwise so thanks so very much for watching my video today i know there's a wealth of other action figure channels you could be watching and you chose to watch mine and i'm very very grateful to you for that and i hope to see you around here again you know in these parts sometime soon for another review or whatever so um yeah take it easy folks hope you have a great day and i'll see you again sometime soon Toronto.